Hello, I'm Don Moores, and welcome to Montgomery Week in Review. It's summertime, and Interfaith Works is back at it again, filling 3,000 backpacks with school supplies for children throughout Montgomery County who are deserving of our help as school begins soon. Monica Young will tell us how everyone in our community can help out. Cover story in the Beacon this month is Big Train Baseball. It's 20 years of existence in Montgomery County. It was the brainchild of Bruce Adams, and he continues to provide leadership. Stuart Rosenthal, editor and publisher of The Beacon, has this story and oh so much more from the July issue. The recent primary election in Montgomery County had a lot of surprises, had more candidates than could be counted. And perhaps this was because it was the first election with public financing coupled with term limits at the county council level. And there may be a new candidate or two who will be on the ballot this November as we go to the general election. Jane DeWinter, commentator for Montgomery Week in Review, has some thoughts on this. And as Jane does, she'll have thoughts on so much more as well. <laughs> Running for office is always a challenge, but generally easier, it's thought, if the candidate is an incumbent. This year's crowded races in the primary brought some surprises to some incumbents. We've got one of them right here. Maurice Morales, delegate from District 19, has a story of her loss. Welcome, all of you. Let us start, Monica. I love the backpack story. We've been you've, it's been exciting for me through these years hosting this show, mm -hmm. and, and you've been a regular as we talk about the backpacks mm -hmm. and, and what it means for these kids and for Interfaith Works. So let's start off with what's, what does Interfaith Works do as far as this project is concerned? So Interfaith Works is, a, is an agency, a nonprofit that's been around for almost 50 years, actually 47 exactly. And what we do is a variety of programs. Mm -hmm. We cover the whole spectrum of homelessness and poverty mm -hmm. and everything in between. You're all about empowerment. A lot of empowerment, a lot of prevention, right. and a lot of uh, hard work on our right. staff to really meet the needs of our community. Right now at the Interfaith Clothing Center, which is located on Twin Brook Parkway at the old right. Broom Junior High School. Broom with an E. It, mm -hmm. Broom with an E. Mm -hmm. We are getting ready for summer, and we're getting, we have a month to get three. Getting ready for the fall. We're in the for summer. the fall, I'm Getting sorry, for, for the, the fall. Right. Yes, you're, already you're, right. you're, you're already got ready for the summer. That's right. I need to think about the backpacks. So we need right. to think about 3,000 backpacks that we need to prepare for the children in Montgomery County Public right. Schools. Perfect. And what's and so I know there are a lot of questions, and because this is a very popular topic on the show. Is So what goes into those backpacks? We have a brand new pack and all the stuff that Montgomery County teachers are lists that every kid needs according to the grade and according to the age. To be ready for so the start date, So they're ready, so we stuff them and everything is new. So we give them a brand new backpack with new supplies. How do you know how many of each grade and age to prepare? We just have to take a guess, <laughs> a major guess. That's what we need, 3,000, but we give away 3,000. So we have, you know, divided them up in the different grades and we can actually combine, like two to four is one level and, right. and so we have that. And you do things for people who are trying to get into the workforce too, I understand. That's that. right, that's but right. But before we turn to that, let's oh. keep going on. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, I was going to ask because you're do, you're, Interfaith Works is doing 3,000 backpacks, but other organizations are also sponsoring mm -hmm. backpacks. Do you have any idea mm -hmm. how many total across the county? I have no idea. Okay. All I can tell you is that I got a number of 70,000 children that will be expecting backpacks. Because right. that's what I, I thought was the important number is yeah. that that's the level of need that we have. It is a tremendous, especially now I think more than ever, you know, we have kids and also we have transfers, you know, so we always keep a small backpack supply for the January kids that are coming, right. the people, kids that are crossing mm -hmm. Uh, countries and people who are coming, so we always uh, have to be loaded enough to if, be able to if supply. If we wanted to contribute to your effort, would it be better to do it through donations or through actually organize some, something in the community and kind of, you know, actually send phys physical backpacks filled with all of these Both supplies? Both work. Okay. Both Wonderful. work. We would love to get the backpacks. We would like, you know, right now I'm really facing, I have the backpacks, so I have some backpacks, but I don't have the guts for the backpacks. So I need the filler paper, the folders, the okay. pencils, the color, uh, the scissors, all those kind of things. But cash, we can all, always order bulk too. What's so the most surprising that? element that seems to be missing that, that, that the teachers want? 
these kids to have or the one or the the, the one element that's the most difficult to put in either you, way you know I think the most expensive I, I will say is the most expensive is binders binders are like 349 per binder they are. at bulk they are very so when I need see uh, 3,000 of them that's a lot of money Right. That's a lot of money. So mm -hmm. imagine if you have three or four kids to fill up a backpack. A backpack is worth about seventy-five to a hundred dollars wow. for a family that's living two hundred percent or below the poverty line. That is a major expense when you have right. more that's than correct. one child. Mm -hmm. So, but the beauty of it is that in the Fridays during the month of August, we'll be distributing all these backpacks, and it's a kids program only. No adult is welcome to come with them. So we have piles of backpacks and the kids get to pick up the backpack that they want to leave for for the rest of the year. Any and mountains exactly. of apples there as well to pick up to, to for bring the as to the speaker? <laughs> Not yet, but for that's a great days, idea. I, that's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> Don, apple that's for the kid, <laughs> apple for the teacher. <laughs> that's a great idea. Stuart, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. You before. mentioned beforehand there were all these programs for people trying to get into the workforce and training them with English and mm -hmm. computers and clothing mm -hmm. and all kinds of things. So at the Interfaith Clothing Center, it's not clothing anymore. And actually, uh, we're thinking about a new name for this center because it has grown in such a way that we're providing much more. Okay, about 45 seconds left. There's, there's six different <coughs> programs, workforce development, and of course, vocational services are there. But also, a Prepare to Impress Corner in which we're collecting professional clothing with all the accessories and teaching people how to dress for the interview and for the job and mm -hmm. for the workforce. Mm -hmm. But we also have English conversation classes. We have referral processes. We have housing program right there on site. And most important, we have a lot of people who care about our neighbors in need. Well, I think as a united effort of all the houses of faith and and you know across the spectrum, and we have such a mosaic. It's it, what a what a great tradition. Only great in legacy. Montgomery County, Don. This is great. Exactly. <laughs> it's great. And also part of the public-private partnership. Yes. That the Definitely. Plan. Monica, thank you. thank you. Good luck. Thanks, we'll do Don. Do we can to thank help you. pull this up. Thank you very much, Stuart. Don. Let's play ball. <laughs> right. <laughs> 20 years of, of uh, Bethesda, big train, baseball. Right. Uh, fantastic. Welcome back. The beacon, I'm going to say before, I like to say at the end, but I'm saying, I love your paper. It, may, it provides more information, I think, any, any journal, that, any publication in this, in this mm -hmm. region. And, and Thank just you. hats off to you. Thank you so much. We thought this was like a, a nice, fun summer story because you know Bruce Adams, who everybody from the county should know for mm -hmm. all the things he does for the county, was the driving force behind mm -hmm. this local collegiate, summer collegiate baseball league. Indeed. Uh, not, not just the team, but a whole league, uh, the Cal Ripken Senior League, uh, which grew over time. But anyway, he raised the money to build the stadium, which seats 1,500 people there in, in Cabin John Park. He's promoted it for many years. He right. brought, brings these college students, some of whom have actually made it into the big leagues over time. So it's just been a really beautiful story and of his, success. And his kid, his kid uh, uh, graduated from high school as a top player and went on to play I as didn't even well. know that. Yeah, and, ah. and a little bit of Bruce as well. He and his wife went around the country and they, and they wrote they the guide. They wrote a guide. travel book, right? The Fodor's book on, on baseball on minor, vacations or something. Well, minor <laughs> league baseball parks. And yeah, yeah mm -hmm. he, he's, he's nutty about this yeah. and mm -hmm. he's put his, his thoughts and words into action, which, mm -hmm. is, which is commendable. And, mm -hmm. What what is special about going out there? I mean, you're it's it's just well on a summer sort of evening. You know, you, they have upwards of 500 people at these games. Right. It's really a nice community spirit, and they're all ages, and there's food, and then they usually have some kind of uh, nonprofit who's recognized, and they yeah, have, I was you know, people say, throw out the first pitch. We did it once. Get we threw out the pitch once. Yeah. You know, it wasn't me. I had someone up on my staff. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, it, it's a really it's a lovely place. It's a lot of, a lot of fun. It likes old times. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, the kids and yeah. so many kids who play organized baseball. It's a place also for them to to interact with players. I mean, these are college students who are here in the summer. It's like the Cape Cod League, and mm -hmm. and there's a camp. I know my son went there. I'm right. I'm actually going to a big link, uh, big train game tonight. Oh wow! Ooh. So it's it's the timing is perfect. But yeah. what what do you think this says about the community? Because it really was a private public partnership, uh, public land. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Adams was a former politician, right. uh, county council president, uh, and, and on. And, and he really used his, his connections to, to put together pretty impressive. Bruce is all about partnerships. That's really what he does for the county even today. And I think he gives a good example of what one person can do mm -hmm. if they set their mind to it. If they have a passion, if they have a desire to make change, do something good for the community, they can do it. Mm -hmm. You just you know, right. come forward with the idea, convince people that it's worthwhile, and mm -hmm. then you, know, you can make it happen. 
I think one of the things that I also want to recognize, Bruce, is because our kids, the kids that we serve, have benefited from tickets to the big train. Mm. So for kids to be exposed, even at that level of a game, which never mm -hmm. get a chance to pay mm -hmm. the hundreds of dollars for mm -hmm. a real mm -hmm. right. professional to come to the park mm -hmm. is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's really great. You're right, partnership was... I mean, partnership yeah. too, I, I, I'd, I'd be low to, uh, or be remiss if I didn't say, uh, uh, discuss the fact that Montgomery Community Media would not be here without him. That was his pushing in the county council mm. uh, that we needed to have this as a part of the PEG. So we all have so. to thank him for that as well. Yes. <laughs> it wouldn't be here. And, uh, and as well with the county executive for our, our sister cities programs mm -hmm. and so much within the mosaic. And yeah, this has turned into Bruce Adams. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what about the beacon? But, 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 but he's a lot like you in terms of being community minded and bringing people together and all the things that you do at the beacon. So you, know, you. you and Bruce are both pillars. I will throw out one statistic that I think will be very impressive, I hope. Um, we know for the past few months we've had this celebration of the arts, amateur art competition. Yes. Yeah. We invited yeah, people yeah. from all over the community to submit paintings and photographs and, and poems and all kinds of things to this competition. We had 930 entries. Wow. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Great. yeah, we're blown away by the response. And you should see, they're all on our website, you can see them now. Mm -hmm. Beautiful work, incredible mm -hmm. work for people over 50 throughout the like community. What was like the biggest category? P painting, painting, painting and drawing, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. But the photographs are beautiful too, uh -huh. it's just amazing. So we're going to yeah. put this together, we're going to have, uh, they're judging them now, and we'll have the winners, and we'll have, uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell you more about it as time goes on. Are they anonymous yeah. judges? No, 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 <laughs> they're not. I'll, I'll be happy to tell you, you know, we'll discuss I would, that I, later. No, I, I have Leisure World in my district. I would love to know how many folks from Leisure World participated. Oh, I'm sure there were oh, a lot. Yeah. I would love to see the, the okay. talent yeah. there. Now, speaking of Leisure World, uh, health issues. Yes. And, okay. and our seniors. <laughs> okay, medications. A lot of people are concerned about uh, making their medications work for them, and are they going to be a problem if it's expired? Because it's expensive. People don't want to throw medicine out if they don't have to. So we have a story explaining what you do and don't have to throw out depending upon the time. But the main thing to say is the whole idea of an expiration date is from the manufacturers on how long the pills or whatever will last in extreme heat, extreme light, and you know extreme temperature, so whatever. Uh, on that 30 bad, seconds bad, bad. So it, n really, if you're going to store them well like you're supposed to, if you're right. going to keep them cool or keep them in a cabinet, keep them in the dark, they'll last a lot longer than that. Yeah. They, did, they, wow. pilled, they took 50-year-old bottles of, of antihistamines and painkillers and found they were still potent. You know, so I mean, yeah. a lot of these wow. things don't lose their potency, or they do mm -hmm. maybe a little bit, but you can yeah. still take them. So, but yeah, there are things you should be, be aware of. If you don't leave them in the car in right. the summer, okay. they're going to last a lot longer. Right. Right. Yeah. But the things you should be aware of, and we mentioned that in the article. But you should be prescribing your medicine for somebody else. For instance. <laughs> That's another good thing, of course. Final <laughs> thought. We got about ten seconds. Uh, final thought. Uh, pick up the beacon this month. There's lots of good stuff in it, like you said. I'm going to encourage people to uh, to see all the nice information that we have. Fantastic. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Look forward to having you back next month. Thank you. We have to take a break right now. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> and we're back. Jane, welcome back. Thank you. We were talking a lot before the primary election, especially mm -hmm. in, your, in our discussions about the Board of Elections, but that, a Board of Education, I should say, but so much more happened, and now that it's over, can you help us dissect the, yeah, well, from the macro level or some of the micro level? A What's lot of people happened? have been wondering, you know, okay, this was the first year of a public finance system for Montgomery County uh, candidates, and did it have an impact? Well definitely had an impact in terms of bringing people out to run. Like there were 33 people running for four seats on the county council at large. Right. But I would s be hard pressed to say that it had an impact on the results. Hmm. What, and, and why, what are you saying about that? The, the winners, so the, the four winners, and, and sadly not a woman among them. Right. right. Which I think that may be the tale That's of the tape here. We, you know, we had a point in the state delegate, or state, uh, uh, the, the delegation in Annapolis, where we had over 50% were women mm -hmm. some years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And and the county council of, of a good number of women and, and on through, not quite yeah. a 50%. But it seems like retreat. Exactly, for women, right, because there was, you know, Years ago, there was four out of the nine members were women, right. and then it was been down to two for the last down to three one. and a half years, and now it'll be one. And I guess well, for potentially if if if, the, if right, people are elected right, in November, yeah. right, yeah. Um, and I think that one thing that's important because a lot of times people say, oh, well, you know, 
but I, I've known this other person, this man who's been in office somewhere else for a long time or whatever. I'm not going to vote for somebody just for women. Well, then don't complain about it afterwards because really, if you really feel that having a mix brings a valuable perspective, brings you know some new knowledge or a new way of thinking things and a different kind of tone or tenor. And also in being the at group. the table. Right, being, being at, at the, the table, table exactly. If that's important, being, yeah. then you got to vote that way, that right. that's, that's important. Right. And I, I am definitely somebody who thinks it's important. Right. But let's go back and then open right. up. But let's go back to that point of why you didn't think that public financing had an impact oh, okay. on, the, on their result. Right. Well, I think that, um, you know, like for the county executive, there were some candidates that used public financing, some candidates who used traditional financing, some candidates who really self-financed. And I think actually the result um, was was not really a huge surprise in terms of Mark Elrich eking out a victory, um, even though, yes, he used public finance. And you had a self-finance guy who nobody had ever heard of, a little bit like Trone or Delaney right, coming out right. of nowhere. Came in second, purchasing, right. I mean, I would say right. purchasing election, but within that's what it's... Within 80 right. votes. I mean. Right, right, within 80 votes, Almost yes. Went, and may yes. still end up winning. I mean, who knows if there's yeah. a recount. Yeah. But, um, how, but much, it, how much did it cost the taxpayers to fund these campaigns? Well, the... County had set aside eleven million dollars because that was basically if um, if many people had reached you know like the maximum that they mm -hmm. could, um, but there was very few candidates who reached you know like the maximum level of, of mm -hmm. that they could get, and so so far the county's only spent four million. Mm -hmm. And not everybody got it either. Right. right. There were people who opted out of the right. public funds. Well, Lots. opted out, but there Lots were people, people who who un involuntarily opted out because they made mistakes. Right. Um, yeah. There was very uh, one of the things I wouldn't be surprised to see some tweaks to the law mm -hmm. because basically you got one bite of the apple you got to submit your your list of all of your donors once and if if any if and you had to have a certain number of them and it had to reach a certain dollar level. Right. And if you had any errors, like somebody had given you an address, but really they were registered in somewhere right. else or whatever, um, and those got knocked out, you didn't have a chance to correct it or come back again. Wow. So it was like a one oh. a one time thing. And so there was definitely some candidates who reached what they thought was the dollar amount and you know turned in some things, but I don't want to dumb it, right. but we have such a short time. Yeah. We have just a little over a minute mm -hmm. left, which is crazy. The county executive race is not over yet. We've got Robin Ficker won the Republican. He was unopposed, and now he's got mm -hmm. he's entitled to the county uh, uh, to public funding. We have Mark Elrich. Looks like he's going to be the winner over this self-financing mm -hmm. David Blair. New entrants coming New in. New entrants coming on? in. Well, there were a number of people who felt that, you know, call Mark a socialist <coughs> or whatever, although mm -hmm. he, he would say, no, he isn't. But... Um, <laughs> But so there was some talk in the business community that, okay, we're not happy with, you know, Mark being the Democratic nominee. And so Nancy Florine has changed from being a Democrat to being an independent and has filed to run as an independent. She was one of the few kind of council people who didn't run. Right, who didn't <laughs> run, run. Right. didn't run. So how is that going to affect, 20 seconds Jean, left. Because I think yeah. one of the things is okay. how is that going to affect two Democrats, well-known Democrats, running maybe mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. each other. Hello, Robin Ficker. Uh, it, Robin it, Ficker exactly. has That's been way I, underestimated before. And this might be it. And yeah. So yeah. this is Ficker's time. I mean, even last time, Ike, Ike didn't even get two-thirds of the right. vote in the general right. election. And if you talk about two people splitting less than two-thirds. There's danger. I can't wait yeah. to hear more. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wish we could talk more and more about this. We yeah. have like three shows just on the yeah. election. Yes, and just yes. To, only Sweet. just to name the names. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, look forward to having you back, Jane. Yeah. Our newest first time on this panel, you were not eligible in the past <laughs> as a candidate uh, running for anything. Uh, Maurice Morales, delegate of District 19, Delegate Morales, we appreciate your being here. If you don't mind me saying Maurice. Absolutely, please. Thank okay. you for the invitation. So. It's 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 horrible to lose. You're and and, and I you know you've you've served uh, District 19 just as a term, uh, and and you came up on election night and all of this you know this confusion with all these candidates. Right. I'm I'm so sorry. No, first of all, um, thank you. You know, it's it was looking back on that night. I think that it really it hit us when. 
you know, it was more than half the precincts were in, and I just had to, I had to be strong for my team. But I think that democracy is 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 a wonderful, wonderful thing, and um, I think talking about the public finance, it actually I see it from the perspective that it allowed folks who may have thought, you know what, I can't afford to to run for office jumped into the race. And so you had 33 candidates, and so voters were just overwhelmed. You had mailboxes full of mail pieces. Right. Folks didn't even realize, you know, this is, this candidate is for county council. This is my, you know, my sitting incumbent mm -hmm. delegate who's done X for us, or, 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 or maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, and I think folks were just overwhelmed, and they were just, they were just tired. They were tired of hearing another politician, mm -hmm. another robocall. Mm -hmm. um, and you yeah. know, and, and, and what's really kind of, what's heartbreaking for me is that we work so hard in Annapolis and a lot of times we just don't have the capacity to really put out that message because we, you know, we don't have media coverage. The DC mm -hmm. metro area doesn't really come to Annapolis. So a lot of the things that I've worked on really was covered by the Baltimore Sun, right. the, you know, the Baltimore kind of area TV cha mm -hmm. stations and so, we used to have WAMU covering, um, but they are no longer sending oh, anybody yeah. to Annapolis. So, you know, I just I yeah. loved my time right. in Annapolis, and, right. I, and I hope that. Well, you still have more time. You still have more time. That's I will be. That's correct. Well, and what I think is heartbreaking too is that when you look in the county at people who, you know, people would like to see go and lose their seat. There was no, right. that was not an issue Thank with you. you. There was no, you know, like okay, we need to yeah. defeat Amari Say you know, you're doing a good job, and yet you can't get other people maybe out of their seat that you want to. I think that that's one of the dangers, and, and what do you think this role, it plays a role in, of having it where you get three votes and you're all in a pool? Well, I think, I think I wasn't your normal incumbent. You know, a lot of the things, a lot of the folks, I always take advice from folks that have been doing, you know, what I'm doing before me. Take, take advice mm -hmm. from folks that have been there before. And so a lot of times they would say to me, you're fine, you know, you're an incumbent, you're fine. And I said, well, I'm a woman, I'm a woman of color, I'm a millennial, you know. And so if you look at the electorate, they don't, they don't necessarily look like me. And, and, and it's not that, you know, th there's like, you know, any kind of specific, you know, racism or anything like that. But, you know, as a human being, you, you, the natural instinct is to go with what you're familiar with or to gravitate towards someone that you may feel like you have more in common with. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, when I was, it was hard when I when I got elected. You know, I I, I campaigned a year and a half in advance. Mm -hmm. I knocked on all these doors. I not, you know, it was twenty two thousand doors that we we talked to, um, and I really needed to prove myself to folks as mm -hmm. a, as a woman. And I have more you know more professional preparation than I would say the majority of the legislature. Mm -hmm. I'm an attorney by trade. Not, and I'm not an elitist. I mean, it's yeah. just to show that as a woman and p potentially because of a minority, you have to overprove yourself. Well, thank you for representing people of color that well. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your service because, mm -hmm. you know, as a woman, I'm going to support you 100%, mm -hmm. but too bad. I, I, we, we hear what you're saying, I think. Mm -hmm. We hear what you're mm -hmm. saying. I think also. It was but, a tough but, election. But it's important. Yeah. I think you came back that democracy mm -hmm. uh, is, is what is at the center of this. That's correct. And and, and, and elections are about decisions. And I think that in this kind of strange election cycle where it was overwhelming in terms of numbers, um, and quite frankly, as you laid out with the sun, not, you know, <coughs> uh, is, is what covers Annapolis mm -hmm. and, and the Capitol and, and others, but not in this area, it's really difficult to get that connection. Yes. I mean, you, you really mm -hmm. have to almost be campaigning all the time. That's correct. Or, 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 or communicating all the time in what is a part-time legislature. That's mm -hmm. correct. And and still be working as mm -hmm. an attorney and, and everything else. So it's mm -hmm. it's tough. You you weren't alone. Um, uh, a white male in, uh, right. who was the president of your Robinson. president of Montgomery County delegation yep. Yep. gets knocked out uh, as well. Um, where do you go from we've got thirty seconds. You've got uh, your 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 legal career moving mm -hmm. ahead. Um, how do you stay involved with public service? What's your, what are your This, thoughts? you know, serving others is just a calling. I still have that fire in my belly. Um, and, you know, I was just actually talking to Monica earlier. If I could be of any help um, to the, you know, the nonprofit community, fighting, you know, for, you know, to stand up for ESOL kids or, you know, mm -hmm. fight for our Continue homeless Continue to fight. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Please sit. Thank you. Yeah. And thank all of you. And thank you for your service. Thank all of you for your service and everything and being here today. And I want to thank all of you in the viewing audience for being with us for this week's edition of Montgomery Week in Review. I'm Don Moores inviting you to return. Watch us again next week at this very same time.